me, made me feel good about it, and didn't ridicule me or nothing. So I kept on doing a lot of research, reading what the other research people do, and why it cannot be filmed. Because uh, they have, I mean, they're out there all the time. Mm -hmm. And some guys go out there for 30, 40 years and never see one. Right. And I have to look at it from the outside, from what they're doing, not copy what they're doing, because they never really get anywhere. There's plenty of footage out there, but it's never very long. And you don't know if it's real or fake. Well, well speaking about that, you, you said a few minutes ago, you know, nobody's gotten any film of it. What about the Patterson film? Do you think that's legitimate no, no, or that's hoax? I meant, I meant good filming. So, so tell me, do you think the Patterson film is legitimate or is it hoaxed? Well, if it is a hoax, they mm -hmm. knew what it looked like. So I go to I I'd, I'd rather say the, the thickness of it and how thick it was. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I, it's hard to compare mine at nighttime to theirs at daylight. Right. But I can say the size of it, the thickness and the mm -hmm. neck is almost 99%. All right. What sets your research apart from other researchers? Well, we're going technology all the way this time. We're not going to be on the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, the airship is a dual airship, never been market, on the market before prototypes being built right now in Canada and it's 35 foot long mm -hmm. and the filming platform state of the art completely hand built I can see the camera system I'm using I can see you a mile away in pitch black dark so I have a range that most people don't have on the ground right so once I find one I can track it from the air because I can go up to 7,000 feet high with this. It's, it's being custom made for that range. Mm -hmm. So the higher you are, the more land you can cover. Plus I have a 10 mile range with the remote control airship. So this way I can cover a lot of land every night. I can fly about nine hours a night. That's the refuel one time. I got a five hour uh, fuel system and the camera system took a while to figure that out to go over five miles and have a clear reception just got that done and uh, the challenge I believe I'm going to have is how close can I get to these things to be able to film them right. that's the reason the camera system goes from 30 millimeter to 100 millimeter and that be con is all controlled by hand so I can get really close up images and once I find what I'm looking for and the good thing is the airship is so maneuverable I can spin it on a dime you don't have to go in a complete circle to make a u-turn I can turn it it has no propellers it's all propulsion uh, patent propulsion and I can stop it I can set it right where it's at and I can stay there, even up to 25 mile an hour wind. It's right. made for the. How are you going to be able to tell the difference between a camper and Bigfoot? Well, that's the learn learning thing about this. If you've never done this before, you definitely have to learn what you're doing. Now, I, I, I would imagine I would imagine you're going to have to take it out for test trials before you actually commence your research. Oh yeah, it's going to be. Well, I have a, uh, a volunteer mm -hmm. in Virginia. He's he works for a military FBI. He's into he did the he's the one that built the I got you, uh cam trail cam that's buried underground where the sound of the unit can't be heard by anything. And he has a special chip that I can put in my camera system mm -hmm. that color codes every animal. Even a deer and a bear will be different colors. But will a human and Bigfoot be different colors? It would have to be, yes. But how are you going to do that if you don't know the the biological makeup of Bigfoot? Well, this is the way I think it'll work, just theory, mm -hmm. is that if I find something way out in the middle of nowhere, I'm sure the odds of it being a person are very, very low. It's not going to be a person. But if it is, mm -hmm. the lenses I have... 
I can almost read a license plate three quarters of a mile away. So who's funding this project? Well, we're just starting to get funding from a nonprofit organization, and I have to put money into it, but we yeah. are still seeking funding. It's very expensive. I would imagine not, so. Yeah, we're, we're talking 100000 just for the equipment. And the infrasound is new. Mm-hmm. That's being built, built right now. This way, once we collect the sound that this creature makes, we can use it in other areas, and hopefully it will return a sound. All right, here's a hypothetical question for you, all right? Okay. Please don't take this the wrong way. Go ahead. What happens two years from now, no fines? I just keep going. Why? What's driving you? What What is so important to some people about discovering what Bigfoot is? Well, it's not important. Uh, that's not the idea of staying out there and just keep doing it. It's the mm. idea that I personally seen one close enough where I could touch it. So I know they're real. And but, it, plus, but isn't that good but, enough? You know it's real? Why do you have to prove it to other people? Why do I have to prove it to other people? Yeah. Well... A lot of people have theories of what it is. Okay, hold that thought. You and I have to take our news break at the bottom of the hour. When we come back, I'd like to hear what your theory is about this creature. Okay. William Barnes is our special guest, Exxon Nation. I love his enthusiasm. His website is www.bigfoot24-7.com, and we're talking about the Falcon Project. Once again, his website is www. Bigfoot24-7.com. If you'd like to uh, be one of the people who help financially, I'm sure that there's a way on his website to contact him. In fact, we'll ask him on the other side of the news how people can contact him if they'd like to help him financially. My name's Rob McConnell. This is The Exxon. We're coming to you live and around the world from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. On the Talkstar Radio Network, Exxon Broadcast Network, UK High Definition Radio, Euro High Definition Radio, and on Star Cable. Don't go away. We'll be back right after this break. Me and he was talking democracy and joke. Well, the party they gonna have out in St. John's Walls. Are you considering calling a psychic to read your situation? Then consider David Champion, a psychic medium for more than 20 years with thousands of readings under his belt. David Champion will make you feel comfortable. He has proven to be honest and accurate. He's a straight shooter. There's no guesswork. What he sees is what you get. While he is a medium, most of the calls focus on relationships. Not only love, but work, school, neighbors, and more. Need help with finding a job and preparing for the interview? Are you dealing with people who are obstacles in your path? For more information, go to davidchampion.com. $1.50 $1.50 per minute, paid by credit card, with a minimum of 30 minutes. For your reading with David Champion, call one 702 8598 That's one 702 8598 Now you can dial in to listen to the Exxon Radio Show from anywhere in the world with Rob McConnell 24-7, 365 by dialing 213-401-0080. That's 213-401-0080. If you have a mobile phone or landline, the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is now at your beck and call at 213-401-0080. That's 213-401-0080, 24-7. 365. You're listening to the X Zone Radio Show live and around the world on the Talk Star Radio Network, X Zone Broadcast Network, UK High Definition Radio, Euro High Definition Radio, and Star Cable. Our toll free telephone number worldwide is 1 800 610 7035. Our email address xzone at xzoneradiotv.com. On MSN Messenger, xzoneradiotv at hotmail.com. And our website, www.xzoneradiotv.com. Faces, 
the romance in our hands Heaven's holding a half moon Shining just for us Let's slip off to a sand William Barnes is our special guest this hour, Exonation, www.bigfoot24-7.com. And uh, we're talking about the Falcon Project. First of all, Bill, if, if people would like to contact you and get financially involved with the project or become a volunteer, how can they do that? Uh, my website, I have a contact button. Just There's an email and phone number. They can call me directly if they want. Excellent. And that's at www.bigfoot. 24-7.com. Bill, what is your theory about the nature of the North American ape? Well, mine are just theories, but uh, the strange thing that really bothers me is, is are the hands and the mm-hmm. feet. And it's like, uh, you know, it's too co- coincidental that it's almost like human-like. And I do want to tell you... When I saw this thing walking through the canyon, it didn't walk like a human, or it didn't walk like an ape, because mm-hmm. apes usually don't walk like that. And the human aspect is is because it stands up. And I I, I don't think it's a human of any type. I think it's. Uh, uh, I have to refer back to the Bible. I use that as a reference guide to almost anything in the world usually. And in, and there is a place there. It says there were. A beast, hairy beast, mm-hmm. fighting side by side. And if it's mentioned there, there's probably some truth to it because a lot of stuff in the Bible is true. And I'm sure some of it has been twisted because of mankind, the way they write things, but that part has always been there. So I really think it's more of an ape. I've seen an ape when it turned sideways. That's what I saw as an ape. Is it possible? Is is it possible what you saw may have been an escaped circus ape? No, not walking on two feet. Hmm, interesting. Uh, tell me, what is your ultimate goal if you should actually find and film the North American ape? Education. Educate people about what this is out there living in our forest. But don't you think once it's established that it actually does exist, that it, this will just cause more and more people to want to capture it, whether it's a live capture or a dead capture? Well, I don't think so, because I think they can take care of themselves. Look how well they've done it so far. You don't have to put no reserves out for them. Mm-hmm. The only thing I want to point out is that after the footage is done, we do want to have protection in all states on no kill zone. But do you actually think that they will just put out protection on a a a non let me see how let me phrase this the right way on simply film footage and actually not the the actual species itself? Well, the the camera system we're using is is so high resolution mm-hmm. that there won't be no mistake what we're but, looking at. But with today's technology Anything can be manipulated, uh, you know, uh, through computer technology. So well, how, will, how will the government know? How will the, the people know, those in power actually know that what they're seeing is an actual Bigfoot and not something created by CGI? Well, you're probably 100% right there, but my goal is 45 minutes of filming. And if I can get 45 minutes of filming of different seg- mm-hmm. different uh, creatures, yeah. And very close up, it's the movements they make that the scientists can decide on their own if this is real or fake. But what makes this so different here where you're going to take this film and then you're going to expect the scientific community, without actually seeing a body, without actually seeing a specimen, to give it a classification and then expect the government to go head over heels to to create a protection for... 